example of do not stop your career for a man do not stop your career for a man do not put things that makes you happy that brings you money aside just because you want to please a man or just because you want to sacrifice things or you want things to work for a man you all do that it always end up in disaster always end up in the disaster because the man will ask you did i tell you to stop going to work did i tell you to move across the country for me i only told you i needed to do this they will tell you i didn't force you um so why are you doing it like they will blame you for doing it this woman shared a story she said that her boyfriend told her that she has been dating for three years told her that he wants to move to another state and she was like all right let's move they moved <laughs> and when they got there he was like i'm sorry we're not compatible she left a lot of things aside of course moving from one state to the other you have to leave so many things aside right and she's the guy was like we're no longer compatible i'm no longer interested and she had to move back after you know making the home making the house a beautiful home then the guy was like we're no longer compatible Um, hey beautiful people, how are you all doing today? It's your girl Maria David and thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, we have another interesting video. While I was watching the video, I was smiling and laughing because I find the song very funny. But then the situation is not funny. It's a very serious thing. And this, I feel like we can learn a lot from her. If you're too engaged in a relationship and you feel like when your partner tell you let us move to another state or he's just telling you i want to move to a particular state and you're like okay let's go he said he wants to move he's not saying let us move i feel like there are two different state sentence now she's back with her mom and she has to start her life all over again with the career everything she left she did goodbye party you see imagine you see if you go if you're in a place and you did oh i'm going goodbye party and i'm not gonna be here anymore the shame for you to come back after doing that goodbye party, I don't think, I, I feel like a few people that want to come back, because they've done bye-bye party for you, for you to come back and be like, okay, you guys, I'm actually back. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's somehow, what is your reaction? What is your take on this video? Can you share your thoughts down in the comment section respectfully? She went ahead to ask her some comment section because some people were asking her some things in the comment section, like, what did you do? Why did you stay so long in the relationship? How come you didn't know you guys were not compatible and you waited for three and a half years? Were you ignoring red flags or you were just being in denial? You know the way these women can be. So let's go ahead and watch what she has to say, then we'll be back. I wish that I had handed that note right back to him and said, no, 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 no. This is not happening. Whatever you think this is, isn't happening. I just moved across the country for you literally a month ago. We committed to a future together. We very explicitly talked about this and committed to it. Now is not the time to give in to the doubts. You had time and you didn't. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you owe me more than a fucking no. I moved for you. I live here now. This is our house. My furniture is in this house. I'm not leaving. Um, and we can talk about this and maybe we'll still break up. But it's not going to be like this. I really wish I had done that, both for me and for him because we had so much love for each other and still do but it's such a tragedy because i want to look back fondly like once i get over this i want to look back fondly i'm the kind of person that like i want to be friends with my exes i love him so much how am i supposed to look back fondly on this he just ruined three and a half good beautiful years 
by doing this. Something that's just so insane that millions of people on the internet are coming to my aid. Like, he's not, like, he's a good man. He's a good person with, with morals. And it's just so out of character for him. And it's just such a tragedy for, for us both. I just wish I had refused the note, said, we're going to talk about this for a week. At the end of that week, maybe it will still break up, but it will be less traumatic and psychologically damaging than whatever the hell you're doing to me right now. And at the end of this week, if we break up, maybe there will be a chance that we can still have a respectful relationship at some point in the future. But I was too shocked to do that. So here we are in Florida living with mom. Y'all acting like I just showed up in Texas and said, surprise. <laughs> I'm not even gonna talk about that one. I'll just let you figure it out. People are saying I need professional help because I still love him, but you can't just like turn your love off like a light switch. It'd be amazing if I could. Oh my God, I would love to, but it doesn't just go away when you want it to. There's this thing called unconditional love and I have experienced it. And it makes me even more mad at him for denying that when he had someone who loved him unconditionally and still does. But I think it's pretty cool that I can love that hard. Obviously, I'm fucking furious. Like, you don't want to know. Like, just, I've never been through something where you're experiencing the extremes of so many different emotions all at once. Love, anger, desperation, heartbreak. These things can happen simultaneously. It's so hard to describe. Oh, and he is paying. Oh my God, he is paying for moving costs. Let the record be set straight. He is reimbursing me for the moving costs. She says she still loves him unconditionally. She still loves him. She's still in love with him. I should feel like he loves her too. And they share some kind of love. <sighs> and she says she, she doesn't mind. She can still be friends with her ex. She's the kind of person that want to be friends with her ex. I feel like that's an ex that you, you should not be friends with. I feel like the one that ruined your career, almost ruined your life. Thank God for your mom that you have to go and meet. What would you have done? You go back to where they did goodbye party for you. How would you do it, right? And you see that kind of love she's talking about. I feel like she's the only one feeling it. The guy doesn't love her because if he loves her unconditionally, I don't know. What does it mean they're not compatible? He doesn't know that in the first six months that they're not compatible. He doesn't know that when she was moving in, when she had to leave everything, her career, her dream, everything, when she has to leave everything and move with him and start, you know, you can see her trying to design the furniture. She bought furniture, like she was really building the home. He doesn't know that they're not compatible then until everything is set, then all of a sudden we're not compatible. He's just using her to build his house. I just feel like these men know what they're doing. They always know what they're doing. And they make you feel like sometimes you are the reason why they are treating you that way. They kind of gaslight you and make you question yourself. Maybe you're the reason things like this are happening. Imagine you live in LA with your boyfriend. I'm sure by now you've seen this video, but here is a very brief overview in case you haven't. But before I do, can we just give this creator props for her creativity? I love how she took her pain and like channeled it into her art. So let's all go support her for that. But anyway, this poor girl is living with her boyfriend in LA, pursuing her career. I think it's, you know, in music and entertainment. And he tells her one day that he wants to move to Texas to be closer to his father. So she gives up her career, takes time off work, uses her savings to pay for movers, packs everything up, off they go to Texas, she's setting up their new house, she's building furniture, she's doing all the things. Now at this point, apparently they've been together over three years, and this man has said that, you know, that he wants to build a future together, um, and whatever, live happily ever after. But as soon as everything's settled in Texas, he hands her a note saying that they're not compatible and ends the relationship. And so now she has to go move to Florida to live with her parents. And this is no shade to the creator, but honestly, ladies, please take this as a cautionary tale. This is why if a man is only your boyfriend, you do not treat him like your husband. I know that he will promise you the world and da 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 da, you're the love of his life. But if he hasn't married you after a couple of years, two, three years, that man doesn't want to marry you. In the back of his mind, that man is thinking, maybe I can do better. 
you are not the dream girl. Now, eventually he might marry you, okay, because at some point he'll decide this is probably as good as I can get. But the reason why some men take a long time is because they're kind of hedging. They're like, I don't know, maybe if I get a bit further in my career and maybe if I achieve this, that, and the other, I'll be able to get my actual dream girl. And that's why you hear these stories of women living with men two, three, five, six, eight, ten years. No proposal. They finally walk away. And what does the man do? He meets another woman six months later. He's proposed. He's proposed to her because she is the dream girl. And that's how men operate when they're with their dream girl. They will not wait. They want to lock that down. If a man is waiting to propose because he's not ready yet, he knows that he is risking you leaving him. Okay, he knows and he's willing to risk it. And the only reason he's willing to risk it is because you're not quite like it. And this isn't an objective reflection of any woman's, you know, value or whatever. It's just how that particular man sees that particular woman. You know, to another man, this creator would be the woman of his dreams. That's just how these things go. So all of this to say that this is a very avoidable situation for women, and this is how you're going to avoid it. Step one, if a man is only your boyfriend, then treat him as such, and do not live with him. Do not give him 24-7 access. Do not treat him to husband benefits. Husband benefits are unlocked when the man proposes. Until then, he's a boyfriend, which means you can go out on dates, spend time together, maybe a couple of times a week at most. You mostly continue to live your life as you did before this relationship started. Obviously, you make time to see him, but you do not completely clear your schedule and center him in everything that you do. Step two, if a man ever asks you to move in with him, to move anywhere for him, you really need to question if this arrangement is going to benefit you. As a general rule, I would say just don't do it. So in that situation, if the man's like, oh, I want to move to Texas to be closer to my father, the only appropriate response is send me a postcard when you get there. Not let me quit my job and spend all my money helping you move, right? However, the one exception is if the man is going to pay for everything and cover all expenses, which will allow you to save all of your money. So in that case, okay, maybe we can see that there might be some benefit here. Because then, worst case scenario, the relationship doesn't work out, you've got a whole bunch of money that you were able to squirrel away because he was covering all the expenses. And finally, have a timeline, okay, where a man needs to propose. So if you're dating a man, if he's not proposing within, I mean, I personally think within 12 months, depending on how old you are, obviously, the younger you are, the longer that timeline can be. But I think if you're well and truly over the age of 25, you know, 12 months is more than enough time for him to decide if he wants to marry you. Most men know right away. That doesn't mean you have to marry him in 12 months. He just needs to propose in 12 months. You're more than welcome to take as much time as you want, planning the wedding, setting the date, whatever. Let him wait for you, not the other way around. Because women's time is more valuable. We have an inherent biological clock, so we can't afford to waste time, and men shouldn't be wasting your time. You don't need to discuss this timeline with him or anybody else. You just have it in the back of your mind. And if you can see that this relationship is not moving along the way that you would hope after that timeline, then just walk away. Because if this man won't marry you, I promise you there's another one who will. But you're never going to meet him if you're still waiting around for, you know, this guy who clearly is interested in marrying you to propose. And for all the women who are like, oh, the sign of time, I'm not ready, da 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 da. Okay, listen up. The only promise of building a future together is an engagement. Any man who talks about how he wants to have a future together but then isn't buying a ring and getting down on one knee is full of shit. So believe whatever you want, but unless and until that man proposes, he's not serious. And if you want to waste your time with a man who's not serious about you, that's your choice. But don't say you were not warned. Imagine you live in LA with your boyfriend. 
So everyone's seen this by now. This girl was with her boyfriend. He said he wanted to move back to Texas to be closer to his family. She gave up her career, made a bunch of sacrifices, spent all this money on the move, and it was a several month process. She's thinking it's all worth it for the love of my life. We're in this together. And as soon as she's done everything, he breaks up with her. This was so avoidable. You know what the clue was? Three and a half years. He said you were incompatible and you never had anything in common because that's how he always felt. Men are very calculating. They will use you to the last inch of your usefulness. Stop having boyfriends. Dismantle the boyfriend industrial complex. That is A.V. Perkins' original term. Having a boyfriend does not serve you as a woman. She put in all of this real-time labor. She was building this man furniture. She spent her money on his move. And as soon as he had milked her for all of her labor and she outlived her usefulness, he chucked her. Now, he did say he wanted to move from L.A. to Texas to break up with her. She should have gotten the hint because he said, I want to move. He didn't say, I have a plan for us to move closer Here's how I see our future progressing. He said, I want to. And, you know, she forced herself along. And yes, of course, men know what they're doing. They're using you on purpose. They should stack up and be men and say, I don't want to be with you if they don't want to be with you. But they want the labor. This is about learning how to protect yourself. Because he was going to leave it there. But once she started making herself useful and paying for the whole thing, he was like, well, let's see what else I can get out of this. Another reason she should have known she wasn't welcome. He goes on the family vacation with his family. Is she invited? No. Is she part of it? Uh Uh-uh. She's sitting at home building his furniture, you know, creating a lovely space for the two of them to share. I'm not saying in relationships there won't be compromise and whatnot, but what you are giving up needs to be in proportion to what you are getting. She gave up half of her career her job stability, and all of her savings because now she's living in Florida with her mother. She gave all of this up because of some vague promise about the future. Oh, I know he wants a future with me because he said so. Did he show you so? Did you get a ring? Did you get the actual marriage certificate? Did he invest in your future? What concrete proof do you have to point to? relationships are a business. And the reason why so many men are making out like bandits is because they're giving you air while you give them the concrete labor. They're paying you dust. Oh, baby, one day in the future, I want to love you someday. Oh, I know we're going to be together. Oh, I know we're meant to be. And in exchange, you're giving him your body, your time and your effort. Get it together. At this point, a lot of women are in a cult. He is giving you promises of heaven and you are giving him real tangible things. So how can you avoid this? First of all, have a timeline. The timeline is for you. It's inside your head. Don't go talking about it with the man. I personally recommend a year. You know, you're good and grown. Either the man wants to be with you or he doesn't. I'm sorry, I'm just rolling my eyes at this three and a half years of happiness tagline. No, three and a half years for him of free SEX, free labor, you know, you contributing your paycheck to the household because he seems like a broke loser. Three and a half years of free maid service for him. I'm sure he was thrilled. And what did you get out of it? A lot of debt in your life is derailed. Which brings me to point number two, start writing things down. Okay, it's easy to get caught up in the feeling of it all. But you need to be charting from the beginning. Is this man adding tangibly to my life? What is he doing? And I mean all of it. Your feelings in the relationship, what you all do on your dates, etc., etc. It goes down. It goes on a diary. It goes on a spreadsheet. You know, it goes in your phone notes app. Whatever you like. Just write it down. Because it's easy to remember the highs and it's easy to forget the lows. But when it's in front of you in black and white, there's no way to deny it. Hey, we've been fighting every week. He's been making me cry every other week. We've been having major fights about his trustworthiness. I see him looking at other women a lot. He watches corn constantly. Whatever. Write it down. Review it. That way, when you see those red flags in retrospect, you can get the hell out immediately. Leave at the first red flag. And if you miss it the first time, by going back and reviewing, you are bound to see the red flags. Act on them. He's not going to get better. Next thing, stop doing anything for men. Stop paying to let men exist in your world. You know, your ancestors to be ashamed. 
If a man isn't investing in you, he doesn't like you. That is literally always true. Because when women come on here talking about the boyfriend cheated on them, what's the first thing they always say? He was coming across with some money. He was taking her out. He was doing the things for her that I beg him to do for me. A lot of men have girlfriends and even wives so they can afford to be a player. They're going to take your money and spend it on someone else. And it is a doggone guarantee. If he's not investing in you, he's investing in someone else. Look at that. He got her to spend all this money on this move. And I bet you he's dating a bunch of girls in Texas. He might have even moved back for one particular girl because this is where he's from. There are people out there saying, oh, that's so cold. That's so calculating. No, what's cold and calculating is men. They are literally plotting how to make you work for them. Because this man is going to go off and live happily ever after. And your labor and your money funded that. This is just a defense mechanism. This is just about you being smart and seeing the patterns ahead of time so you're not taken advantage by people who mean you no good. Is it cold and calculating for children not to go with adults with vans and candy? No, it's just smart. They're trying to harm you. Like and follow for more. It should serve as a lesson for ladies that are in this kind of relationship. If you're in a relationship with a man for a long time and marriage is your goal, I always say it's not everybody wants to get married. So you can be in a relationship an interesting relationship you guys know what you're doing you know you know you don't want to get married you know you don't want to have kids the guy knows he doesn't want to get married as well he doesn't want to have kids because they're enjoying each other right you understand each other but then if you want to get married and you are in a relationship with a man and he's not even going close to marriage or when you talk about anything related to long-term commitment is giving you a side eye or is like telling you oh, i'm not ready yet just go because you're not the one he wants to marry when a man wants to marry he will marry you right then i don't think there's something like oh let me make him get to the stage whereby he will get serious no that is when that's why you see when a man leave a woman that they've been together with for seven years the next lady marries her right it's just you're just building him for the next woman you're building him, you're making him a better person for the next woman. That's just literally what you're doing. They usually don't cheat. And imagine her now after three and a half years, she has to start all over her career. Everything, she has to start all over just because she was driven by just one man. <sighs> moving across a particular state or moving across the country because of a man to me is a no-no. It doesn't always end well. It's, it's a no-no. You can do that when you're married, if it benefits you. Think about it. When you're moving across, and even if you're married, if it doesn't benefit you, don't do it. Let the man go or let you go. Let the man stay. Like Always choose yourself. Most of the time, always choose yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you leave everything behind just to make the relationship work, as a woman, you, we, it doesn't always end up well for us. Like I don't know how much to emphasize. I don't know how I can say this. It doesn't always end well for women that you see women will get pregnant, man will tell them let's get let's have babies, let's do this. They will leave their job, they'll stop their career, they'll stop making money just to be a stay-at-home mom, just to, you know, be a child wife or whatever they call it. She'll start making money. At the end of the day, they come out here to talk about how regretful they are, how they wish they didn't stop their dream job, how they really want to go back to being a doctor that they always wanted to be how they want to be a nurse how they were, they were almost being a, a chef like they just always you know come back regretful right they always come back regretful and I feel like women should learn from this women stopping your career moving across the country and putting your own wants and needs aside just to make another person feel happy it shows how much you don't really love yourself, how much you're supposed to prioritize yourself, prioritize your happiness. So if you're doing something and it doesn't benefit you, don't do it. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> if anything happens, you will hate yourself for it. It's like you regret even why you made that decision, right? And it might affect you mentally, affect you in the long run. And it's like you actually drag yourself back which you're supposed to be climbing up, but then you're going down, if that makes sense. What is your take on this video? Can you share your thoughts in the comment section? Respectfully, check out Maria Davis. And thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like and share and subscribe. And I will see you all in my next video.
Bye.